Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon. In our shops, supplies are running low due to panic buying and COVID-19 restrictions are getting tighter by the day. So I thought we'd have some fun experimenting with limited ingredients and making some sugar decorations so that you can relax and de-stress and forget about the worries of the world, even if it's just for a moment. All you need to make this first one is some sugar and enough water to make it damp. And if you've got it, then a little bit of glucose syrup. You can make it without this, but it does help stop the sugar from crystallizing. Stir that together over high heat until the sugar is dissolved, and then wash down the sides of the pan. You can use a pastry brush or a clean paint brush, just dipped in water. And this washes away any sugar crystals that are on the edge of the pan. If you don't do that, they can cause the caramel to crystallize out and go a bit like fudge. Then you want to leave that to boil. Don't stir it, just let it bubble away until it starts to go golden. Do keep an eye on it because from this point it can turn to burnt very quickly. Turn off the heat and then you're ready to make decorations. If you let the mixture cool, it starts to thicken. And if you just get a little bit on a spoon, you can pull it and wrap it around the handle of a wooden spoon. Now do be careful not to get this on your skin as it is very hot. Once you've pulled a thin bit, it cools down very quickly. But if you get a big clump on your skin, it's still gonna burn you even though we've let it cool down. Now I've put some cooking oil onto the handle so that it doesn't stick and we can slide it off. And then you can very carefully place that onto your dessert. Isn't that just beautiful? Next, I have an easy one for you. Stick a skewer into a hazelnut or any nut you want really. Dip it into the caramel so that it's covered all over. And then you just wanna hang it up so the caramel can drip down and you end up with these long spikes. I've just clamped my skewers to overhead cupboards. You can tape them there or use blue tack or whatever you have handy. Now you can keep these spikes as long as you want them or you can snap them off shorter and add them to your dessert for a striking but easy decoration or just eat them. With hot caramel, you can use any silicon mold that you may have in the house because silicon is heat proof. This one is a lace mold. Now you can just pour some on quite thick and once it's set, it's easy to peel off and it is pretty, but it's a bit chunky for a dessert decoration. You'd be just crunching through that because it's quite thick. In my opinion, it's better to try and make it super thin. And you can do that by pouring it on and then scraping off the top layer while it's still liquid. And once that's set, you'll need to flip it over and carefully pull the mold back. And you can use that as one piece like that or break it into smaller parts and put it on top of your dessert. Now you may have noticed this decoration is quite a golden caramel color. If you're after something that's more white or clear colored, you can use isomalt, which is very easy to work with, mainly because it doesn't crystallize as easily as the sugar does. You basically just put it into the pan and heat it over high heat until it melts. And then dip a round cookie cutter into the isomalt so that you get a thin coating on one side, a bit like you're going to blow bubbles. And then I'm just going to pour some chocolate sauce in onto the isomalt and you end up with these unique little containers of sauce that you can serve with your dessert. Now they are very, very fragile, so be careful not to just drop them. Only silly people would do that. <laughs> You can make these into a bowl of oil so they have a softer landing and then just drain that on some paper towel before you use it. But as I said before, they are very fragile so you don't want to just let them drop. These little containers of chocolate sauce are yummy served with strawberries because you then have that crispy isomalt outer layer and your chocolate sauce and your strawberries. So it takes something very simple and makes it quite fancy and really delicious. Once you've nailed that, you can move on to edible cellophane. Again, using the cookie cutter in the same way as we did before, and then blowing using a hairdryer from a distance, you get this really thin isomalt that looks like cellophane. Now this stuff is pretty cool, but you do need to use it immediately, or it will absorb moisture from the air and go soft. And it's best when it's nice and crunchy and gives that addition of that crunchy texture to a soft dessert. 
Now, I've only ever seen this done with isomalt, and I wanted to know if you could do it with normal caramel too. And if you just actually let the end cool and then pull it, it will make like the cellophane. It just has a slightly browny tinge to it, but it's pretty cool. This next one I really like. If you use a slightly larger cookie cutter and get the base covered in caramel, then quickly place it over a dessert, touch the plate, and then pull back up. And you get the whole dessert wrapped in a thin, crunchy layer of caramel. It looks like it's wrapped in plastic, but it's edible caramel. Coming up next is something I have never done before. Okay, back to the caramel. As I said, I've never done this before. You'll need silicon gloves to give your hands a bit of protection from the heat. It is still hot, but it's just a little bit less hot. Let the caramel cool enough that you can make a ball and then put the metal part into the caramel and try and make a seal around the pipe. Then pump it up. Wow, look at that. This is going to be really uneven because I'm not turning it, but let's just pump it up and see how big it gets before it pops. It's still going and going. It popped, it's over. But because the top has already cooled down and it's already set, it's kind of holding its shape so we could still use some of that. This is fun, I'm gonna try that again but with a smaller amount of caramel. If it gets thin on one side, you can just put your hand there to support that area and it kind of forces it to stretch in a different spot so it stops it from popping. To get it off the pipe, the easiest way is to heat up the pipe apparently using a blowtorch, but mine is out of gas. So I'm going to try just using a hot knife, but again, these are pretty fragile. <laughs> We've still got a piece of it there. You could put a dessert inside that or put that on top of a dessert. Add some cream and now smash it. That's pretty good, you've got to admit. With thanks to my patrons for your ongoing support, you guys are legends. I pray for all of you, my subscribers and everyone around the world for safety at this time and hope that you are all good. Let me know in the comments what's going on in your world. Subscribe to How To Cook That for more crazy sweet creations. Click here to watch chocolate decorations and other interesting stuff so that you can de-stress. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.